Hello and welcome, my name is RDF and today's video is all about the German coach Marco Reus's tactics and what Dortmund can expect from him. This video is brought to you by myself and the mastermind. If you do enjoy content like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button. But for now, let's get started. After two successful years with RB Salzburg, German coach Marco Reus made a return to his home country to take on the role as Borussia Mönchengladbach manager for the start of the 2019 and 20 season. Reus has since changed Gladbach's formation to a primarily 4-2-3-1, focusing more on quick transitions and the importance of fullbacks in build-up phases. Now Reus looks prepared to take over at Borussia Dortmund in time for next season, we take an in-depth look at the tactics he deployed during this season. Here's what Marco Reus can bring to Borussia Dortmund. Although chopping and changing his formation around frequently in the past, Marco Reus has stuck very true to a 4-2-3-1 system this season. Like most 4-2-3-1s, Reus urges his fullbacks to advance with the play and become vocal points in attack. Luckily, Reus has three fantastic plays for this role in Stefan Leiner, Rami Benzbaini and Oscar Wint. Conveniently, Lena was a key figurehead of Salzburg lineup through Rose's time at the Austrian club and the player and manager have a great understanding. A future Dortmund player? Probably not, even despite how much Dortmund could do with a new right back. Much and Gladbach have been associated with quick transition mentality, but Gladbach still utilise methods of playing from the back when possible, with only Sommer and Ginter attempting a significant amount of long passes per game. The fullbacks are particularly important in this methodology, as they attempt to play through wider channels rather than central ones when the ball is playing out from the back. In particular, Christoph Kramer and Stefan Lehner frequently line up to provide forward passes into the right winger. Gladbach used the right side of the attack 39% of the time, whilst also adopting the third most vertical approach in the league 29%. This means that quick attacking transitions and playing through the middle are still important to Rose, but not as much as the manager might have tried to do at Salzburg. During build-up phases, Ginter and LVD are also important in maintaining possession. Stretching the field with reasonably wide positions as the fullbacks get higher and central midfielders come deeper to pick up the ball and form a central square by which they can use to advance the ball into wide areas. When the team operates in the back three, the role of the wingbacks become even more important as the wide forwards, if any are in the team, will play more inverted and look to combine in central areas. When Gladbach are pressing from the front, the attacking midfielder and striker work in tandem to stop the opposition from being able to play from the back as wingers come close together and attempt to shut down wide spaces. This can take the form of a 4-2-2-2 shape, with Stindl joining alongside the striker or more 4-2-3-1 as he remains withdrawn to try and stop the opposition's number 6 from receiving the ball. The pressing system utilised also appears to be more man orientated rather than space or ball orientated. For example, in moments when the opposition goalkeeper has the ball, the striker may press the keeper, the wingers may cover the centre backs and the number 10 will cover the opposition's defensive midfielder. But the press goes far beyond just the front four to include the midfield and the two fullback. The fullbacks will frequently line themselves up with the opposition fullbacks in order to eliminate the option for longer passes or forward passes into the wider areas, as the defensive midfielders will usually engage with the opposition central midfielders. Interestingly for Marco Reus, instead of forcing his opposition back towards their own goal or to the middle, Much and Gladbach have a strong desire to force the opposition into wider areas, where they are set up to win back possession and engage their fullbacks in attacks. Gladbach's press is also particularly aggressive. Although they have kept the fifth most possession in the league this season, 52%, they've also made the fifth most interceptions per game. This emphasises that even when they don't have the ball, they look to win it back and go on the attack right away. This is all part of their quickness in transitions. As seems to be customary of former and current Salzburg managers these days, Much and Gladbach place a heavy emphasis on quick transitions in both attack and defensive transitional moments. Immediately after winning the ball back, they look to utilise short vertical passes or a capable ball carrier to bring the ball up the pitch. Their dribbling power has diminished from last season, particularly with the likes of Turam, Hermann and Plee spending more time on the bench. They've continued their verticality instead with even heavier emphasis on quick short passes instead. The interchange of the front four can also become very important when Gladbach play on the counter. 
as the striker makes a run into the wide area to create a space, the right winger may drift inside to create chaos for the opposition. Plea and Toram are particularly comfortable with this kind of interchange, which again Gladbach haven't seen much of this season. This type of approach also requires ball winning central midfielders and fullbacks to allow the team the ability to constantly stop their opposition and go again. Although Kramer sits in the top 20 in the league for tackles per game, 2.1, they really missed Dennis Zakaria this season. Newhouse is more of a creative, possession based midfielder who likes to take shots from distance, so he has his advantages to the side as well. But Zakaria is so key to the way they play in both carrying the ball forwards for greater distances and winning the ball back through tackles and interceptions when they are out of possession. Finally, despite their emphasis on quick transitions, counter attacking is not necessarily a method for many goals for Borussia Mönchengladbach. It is, however, a fundamental aspect of their play in quickly opening space for their forward players to express themselves in attacking areas. Although Much and Gladbach have lost a bit of traction in the race of the top four this season, Marco Roy's team are still playing some great, tactically intriguing football. The emphasis on transitional moments and pressing from the front have been mainstays in both of Roy's two seasons at the club and now appears to be another manager leaving Gladbach for Dortmund. How this will affect Gladbach for the remainder of the season remains to be seen, but at the very least, Borussia Dortmund fans finally have something to be excited about again. So there it is, a tactical analyst of Marco Roy's 4-2-3-1 formation and his tactic with Much and Gladbach this season and what Dortmund can expect from him. So now, what we're going to do is go into Football Manager 2021 to check out the tactic that I have created for Borussia Dortmund. We're going to see how well Dortmund can do with this 4-2-3-1. So now, let's check it out. So here we are, here is the 4-2-3-1. In goal, we do have the sweeper keeper on the defend duty. Both wing backs are wing backs, but the left wing back is on the support duty. He has closed down more, tackle harder and mark tighter to try and put pressure on the opposition and we are set up to force the opposition on the outside. The right wing back is the wing back on the attack duty. Again, he has closed down more, tackle harder and mark tighter. In central defence, we have two central defenders who are going to be good in possession and maintain possession. They both have stay wider as their instruction. In central midfield, as a double pivot, we have a ball winning midfielder on the support duty and we also have a deep line playmaker on the defend duty who has take more risks. On the flanks, we have an inverted winger on their left hand side. He has roam from position and sit narrower. Roam from position is a bid to try and get some interchanges with the person forward. And on the right, we have the winger on the support duty. In attacking midfield, we have an advanced playmaker on the support duty. He has closed down more and tight marker. Whilst up top, we have the pressing forward who is going to roam from his position and move into channels. Those are the player roles. We're now going to look at the team instructions. The team mentality is on positive. The attacking width is set to fairly narrow. And for the approach play, we are playing from the defence. Focus on the right hand side. We're trying to focus on the right hand side. Get a little bit more presence on the right hand side. Try and replicate that 39% of the attacks on the right hand side. The passing directness is set to standard. So 50% in the middle and the tempo is set to higher. For transitions, when the possession has been lost, we will counter press and when the possession has been won, we will make our counter movements. When the goalkeeper is in possession, he will distribute it to the centre backs, of course, giving it to the centre backs, allowing the wing backs to get further forward and the two central midfielders dropping deeper to create that central box. For out of possession, our defensive shape, we have the higher line of engagement with the standard defence line. The defensive width, we are forcing the opposition on the outside. The pressing intensity is set to more urgent and we do have prevent short goalkeeper distribution. So that wraps up the tactic. There is no set pieces included. I believe somebody wasn't too pleased when I added set pieces to the Fatty Terum recreation. So for this recreation, we have no set pieces. All the goals are kind of organic as you can say because there's no set pieces no long throws and no set piece routine we are now going to look at the results for the competitions the bundesliga well we kind of walked that dortmund on 85 points fc bayern on 71 it was kind of a easy run for us we played 34 we won 27 drew four and lost three in the champions league though it wasn't so smooth 
You can see Salzburg dominate in this group, which is surprising, but Dortmund finished third with one three but lost three. We then went into the Europa League where we managed to win that beating Villarreal in the final 1-1 on penalties. We also won the DFB Pokal, so we actually won the treble. I don't think I actually noticed that when playing the game, but we did win the treble, we won the DFB Pokal, but we did lose in the German Super Cup final. So for the team statistics in the league, average possession, we did get 53% so we were one of the better teams, we scored the most goals and we had the best XG in the league. Goals from direct free kicks, we were the best, we got 4. Clear cut chances created, we wasn't the best, we came in 3rd place with 77 clear cut chances created. Dribbles made per game, we came in 7th so not really many dribbles. But our conversion rate was very good, a 16% conversion rate puts us top in the Bundesliga. Defensively we had the best defence in the league also, only conceding 24 goals and keeping 19 clean sheets. Fouls made, we didn't concede or give away too many fouls, we came in 16th place. Tackles won, we came in 12th. But for the possession one we came in 5th and for the interceptions we came in 3rd. For the play statistics, you can see Harlan was the top goal scorer with 21 goals, but Marco Royce also done very well with 14 goals. And for the assist, you can see Marco Royce with 12 assists, so we actually revived Marco Royce. This is probably one of the best seasons Marco Royce has had in his career. If we check, well, one season he did score 17 goals, but we don't know how many assists he got. He did get an average rating of 7.4 in the Bundesliga this season. Absolutely incredible. Seven player of the match awards. So for the key passes, Marco Royce is there with 75, Rafael Guerrero with 71. For the passes completion ratio, you can see that our defenders are there, one of our defenders have 96% and the other has 95. But that's it for the Bundesliga player stats, we're now going to look at the team report and we're going to see some team statistics. For our attacking efficiency, you can see we were very aggressive and clinical, again miles away from any other team in the Bundesliga, very impressive stuff. And for our defensive efficiency, well, we were quiet, almost near the leaky side, almost, but not quite making it, but still the best defence in the Bundesliga. How did we score most of our goals? 36 came from play shots, 8 from powerful shots, 1 from curled shots, we got 8 from headers, 4 from free kicks and only 2 from penalties. Assist 16 from through balls, 15 from crosses, 5 from opposition mistakes, 4 from short passes, 2 from free kicks and 4 from corners. The squad stats you can see Harlan was the top goal scorer with 29 goals in all competitions. Marco Royce got 19 goals in all competitions, 16 assists also. Fulgen Hazard got 11 goals while Jude Bellingham got 10. Yusuf Makuku there with 9 goals, Julian Brandt with 9 and Jaden Sancho with 9 also. For the assist, Marco Royce is there with 16, Rafael Guerrero with 8, Fulgen Hazard with 8 and Giovanni Reina with 8. Now of course with Rose coming in, he will change some things to try and get other players performing. So, so for example, Jaden Sancho, I didn't really get the best from Jaden Sancho and in real life, of course Royce is going to tweak this system a little bit in order to fit his best players at Dortmund end. But lastly, we are going to look at the training and what I did for the training. Now, when there was one match during the week, this is what it looked like. On Thursday, you can see that ball retention was very important for us. And then we did our teamwork with the attacking movement on the Friday. When there was two matches during the week, it wasn't too different. Again, it's similar ball retention there on the Thursday, attacking movement there on the Friday morning with the defendant engaged and defending from the front on the Monday. But that wraps up this video and I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And thank you so much for listening and supporting. My name is RDF. It's been a pleasure. I hope you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment if you have any recommendations or suggestions. I will now leave you guys. Stay safe. Peace out and also thank you Mastermind and Terratino for making my thumbnail. I will see you soon. Peace out.